live, ladies and gentlemen, and James Dillingpole, best-selling author, uh, writes for The Telegraph and many other global publications, uh, is our guest. I just played for you the 2007 Berlin Film Festival winner of short films. It's called Humans by Three Legs, and it shows humans not just a scourge on the planet Earth, the people that brought you Beethoven, the folks that brought you mathematics, uh, the mind of Max Planck envisioning atomic theory, and uh, I mean that's that's humans. We are a scourge, and it shows us unfortunately spreading to space and destroying the universe at the end. I mean this is incredible, and. I was just thinking this morning about how many video clips. I mean, I have, I have ABC News Australia, the headline, Teaching Kids When to Die. And it says if you don't kill yourself by 11 or 14 in the calculations, even if you try to have a good carbon footprint, you must die at 14. Little animals die. And it shows little puppies having their heads chopped up. In fact, guys, pull up the ABC uh, story. Uh, ABC tells kids when to die. And then we have the Prison Planet article that actually has screenshots because they pulled it uh, of the uh, uh, the uh, heads uh, uh, being cut off of small animals. So the message is small animals are dying. And I talk to parents who still have their children in private school and government brainwashing camps. That's why I homeschool my children. And uh, th their young daughters and sons will start crying when they see a construction site or bulldozers. And they say, I need to die. I mean, I've had people at Pool parties, you know, uh, tell me this. Uh, it, it, their children cry. It's you know, seven-year-olds. It's time for me to die. I'm evil. And then we have, of course, this 1010 project funded through the Climate Exchange and Al Gore, The Guardian, local governments in England funding it, saying it's your choice. And the kids say, I don't want to make carbon cuts. And so they murder them. They blow them up with guts and blood. And then those that submit to the tyranny, they have blood all over them and are horrified. Then they kill footballers and blow up coaches and blow up talk show hosts. And they have a corporate scene where the corporate boss is standing above all his employees with an arrogant, effeminate uh, you know, behavior these people always have for some reason. And, and says, oh, lovely, you're not going to do it? Good, I get to kill you. And kills them. So then I have this article. An alternative to the new wave of eco-fascism, The Guardian says why these calls for total tyranny and Nazism are, 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 are bad. We just need a soft, loving tyranny. So there's a total shift to, the, to them saying, look, you won't go along with this. We're going to kill you. James Dillingpole, an expert on this, joins us. And we're going to later play a short clip of Pachari saying, hey, we're going to scare the kids. And they've admitted we don't have the adults. Al Gore says this. We're going right for your children. So are you going to let them indoctrinate your children with an anti-human hate of themselves and how to commit suicide? These people are totally criminal. I mean, they're trying to arrest members of uh, you know Parliament in Europe who criticize Muslims mildly for hate crime. Is this not a hate crime? Teaching kids to commit suicide, James Dillingpole? Well, you know, Alex, I think this is a very significant story. I, I think it's as significant in its way as last year's Climate Gate, and the, this, this this story they're calling Splattergate. Uh, what's interesting about Splattergate is that it gives us uh, an insight into the eco-fascist mind caught out in, in an unguarded moment. What the, what's interesting is, is before this video went out, you know, it was being promoted by the Guardian newspaper, which, is, as you know, is part of the enviro-fascist um, conspiracy. Uh, and the filmmakers were discussing this film, you know, and the various Greens involved with it were talking about it. And they were all going, oh, isn't this funny? Isn't, it's, it, it, it's, it's a bit naughty, but it, it'll get our message across all, all right. And what they had, they had no idea whatsoever that what they were doing was offensive, evil, wrong on so many levels. As far as they were concerned, it was perfectly reasonable to show people who don't believe in man-made global warming, children in a classroom who won't play the eco game, being executed. Because this, unfortunately, is how the uh, envirofascists really see the world. You know, scratch the surface and what you find is a belief in pretty much the same things that the Nazis believed, uh, you know, in population control, uh, in nature being more important than the human species. Uh, you know, and this, this attitude came originally from the romantics, but it, it reached its 
its its its high point in you know late German romantics, and that was filtered through Nazi Germany, uh, and and then it went. It well, went. in the French Revolution, as you're showing your historical knowledge, they wanted to, to depopulate by eighty percent and change the the uh, work week till nine days, one day off. They want to play God, and they have this romantic idea of killing everybody. Really, it's just a psychopathic cult of mass murderers who have packaged an excuse to be control freak murderers. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a, it's been a, I think it's really special for those of us who've been following this debate for some time, who've been trying to say, look, these are not nice, cuddly, bunny hugging people. They don't just care about nature. They also hate the human race. And you say this to people, and they go, but hang on a second, what's so wrong with with trying to save the world from climate change? Uh, you know, what's so wrong about caring about the environment? And you say to them, look, there is nothing wrong with caring about the environment if you're talking about things like sensible conservation me measures. But this is something entirely different. This is a, a concerted campaign to regulate human behavior. It is a concerted campaign to destroy the capitalist system. It is a concerted campaign to ration what they call scarce resources, all in the name of a, an ecological problem which they invented themselves. It doesn't exist. There is no scientific evidence whatsoever that dangerous man-made climate change is happening. There is no evidence at all. So they have to have this... They haven't got the facts on their side, so what do they do? They conduct propaganda campaigns like this hideous advert. And it's not the first. Do you remember the one uh, earlier this year or maybe end of last year where they had all these polar bears falling out of the skies, you know, dying, dying, you know, smashing into the streets? And it shows then humans being killed by the climate change. And they had that other one where the kid says, no more Mr. Nice Guy by Greenpeace. Greenpeace we're, one, we're, yeah. we're coming for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There was the one with that, that horrible kid in the hood saying, yes, you have not obeyed the ways of greenness. You have not cared for nature. Now we will come to destroy you. And there was another Greenpeace ad, uh, again, a, a couple of years ago, which shows a guy coming to the office and everyone is, is kind of making sort of, you know, you're a prick sign, you know, really being horrible to him. And it, guess what the terrible crime this guy has committed in? He's come to work in a four by four. These people hate any form of consumption. They hate any form of personal freedom. They all they want us to They hate any form they don't control. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it's all about. It is about... I mean, when they're flying around in their jets and living in, you know, 20,000 square foot uh, houses and owning their private trains like Prince Charles, that's okay. Yeah. But they're telling old lady pensioners, as you know, in England, uh, we're going to cut your gas off and you can't have a hot bath, okay? But we're going to use welfare money to pay for the queen. Well, <laughs> you read that story. That was quite funny, wasn't it? That... that Prince Charles, the Queen's son, is going around saying to everybody, going around in his biofuel-powered royal train, saying everyone must cut their carbon emissions. You know, we must we must impose more green taxes on on fossil fuels. And there's his dear old mother, the Queen, applying to the government for emergency old folks desperation aid because her electricity and gas bills have increased by fifty percent. No. Why? Because of the, the green taxes imposed because of people like Prince Charles demanding that, you know, we, we rein in on our use of fossil fuels. Now, James, let's go back briefly here with you today mm. uh, to just a few months ago where they did a major university study in Canada and found they were six times more likely to steal, to be criminal, to hate their fellow man. This this environmentalist guild, and I've met a lot of them, they really just hate everybody, and, 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 and they see this as a vehicle to boss everybody around and ninny and nanny over everyone. And then you read all these top professors in the U.S., England, Europe, uh, this new one out in the news being praised for saying exterminate people, I'm a Nazi. I, I mean, they're really a pack of lunatics, but, but I mean, that study showed this is a pack of criminals. Yes, but they mean well, Alex. They do it because they care. They want to kill us because they care too much. You know, I mean, the thing is, if you ask these people, if you met them at a, at a party or whatever, not that you would want to, but suppose you did, um, and you started talking to them, they, they would be they would be perfectly gentle and, and, and pleasant people. They don't think of themselves as evil at all. And this is, of course, the problem. There is nothing more dangerous than somebody who is doing terrible things because it's for the for the good of the world. It's because, you know, they believe that they have rightness
innocent justice. Well, that's what time. Hitler said. He was saving us, and he was a big environmentalist. Yeah, he was. He was absolutely, and so was... Um, well, maybe you're bad, James, and maybe I'm bad, because we don't think Hitler was good. Maybe we should have the red button pushed on us to show us. Oh, undoubtedly. I'm sure we already are on the first on their target list, list Alex. I don't think you need to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, I think that's what's significant about about this this, this terrible video. That it, uh, that, as I said, it, it shows them in, in an unguarded moment. It shows how they think underneath the mask of of, of kindness and ecological righteousness. This is what they really believe. And the, so, you know, you look at any of the key texts of the Green Movement. You know, um, uh, uh, Paul Ehrlich, um, Population Bomb, or um, uh, Holdren. Silent, Silent Spring, yeah. Um, Ted uh, Turner, Jacques Cousteau, it's just uh, Prince Philip, just get rid of 80% of us. Yeah, exactly. They all have this kind of uh, this fantasy that the world is, is overrun with these kind of, you know, this pollulating mass of hideous, maggot-like human beings, um, and that Mother Gaia would be much better sloughing us all off. Um, and, you know, if... Uh, if we don't kill ourselves through disease, then maybe uh, a, a few red buttons here and there wouldn't go amiss. Ha ha, really just joking. Don't you worry. But James, it's funny you say that they think of us as worms. I played the Berlin Film Festival winning video where we're seen as parasite worms. And there's a new game kids are being taught called Super Mega Worm. You're the worm. Mother Earth is on the brink of extinction because of humans. You are the great death worm and you eat humans. Mm. I mean, I've, I've got kids. I've got kids that are uh, at a, one, one at a private school and one at, one at a, you know, a, a state school. And uh, it doesn't matter what kind of school your kids are, kids are at, unless you do homeschooling, as you say, they are going to get exposed on a daily basis to this eco propaganda. You know, I had a look at this expensive private school um, at, at the weekend, um, uh, where, where you know, it costs something like fifteen thousand, about, about what twenty five thousand dollars a year to send your child there, and you know. I I went into the science labs, and there on the wall was this big poster provided by something called the Wellcome Foundation, you know, a, a sort of one, one of the British medical foundations, and it told them that man-made climate change was one of the greatest threats to the human species, and, you know, it was talking about, about decarbonization and stuff. It present, presented all this science fiction as science fact. Our children are being taught this every single day of their lives. James, while you've been speaking, they're coming in with new stuff. There's this super mega death worm. It goes around killing police, killing children, uh, shooting fire out of its mouth, destroying buildings and cars. It goes into space uh, and, and, and kills our astronauts. It attacks our military aircraft. I, I, mean, I mean, these people, it's everything. I mean, it's incredible. Well, tell, tell me about this death worm. What is it? Well, I mean, they just came in and showed it to me. My, my sister works up here, and she was telling me about it uh, earlier, but it's a uh, iTunes, iPhone Touch. It's called Super Mega Worm. We'll get it up on Infowars.com. We're, we're playing their trailer. And interestingly enough, it, it only kills humans. There's space aliens in the game, but they're good, I guess, because they want us dead, too. Well, we just are. I mean, what we want to need... What the idea would be to leave this planet so that only the amoeba and other caring, nurturing creatures can live here in harmony and peace, you know, doing their amoeba thing, maybe with the polar bears stalking the Earth. Now, now, 